What's up, Sassy Gamers? Today is August 5th, 2021, and I'm here with Brian, Bruno, and Kelly. And this is Got Our Attention Podcast, Season 2, Episode 8. I like our old intros where we like would talk more. You guys can talk now. You just don't. I don't understand. It's the whole thing. Is I, I say your name and I pause and nothing. I get nothing from you guys. So there was there was a pause. Yes. There was a pause there. It's micro a little pause. one. Yeah, I mean, come on, guys. It's me. Mike's micro pause. It, it's <laughs> oh, me. It I actually, you. I, I actually it's played the intro music this this week, uh, which is what Mike was expecting last week, and I didn't realize that. Mm. Then I unintentionally gaslighted him, which there was, was a terrible music? thing. Yeah, you didn't hear it. Yeah, see, now now we're doing the <laughs> gaslighting. Exactly. <laughs> I, okay, gaslighting's not a good thing. Like, no, let, let's, it's, it's not a good thing. Uh, and sexual gaslighting, definitely not a good thing. I mean, but they do this to me I, all the time. I'm just not. I, I, I just couldn't help it the other day <laughs> when I just saw the article headline. I mean, of I'm confused. I don't know what the difference is. Article <laughs> it's headline: all sexual, sexual gaslighting, gaslighting to you. <laughs> There's an important distinction between <laughs> between trolling the shit out of your friends and gaslighting. Yeah. Ah, I swore. Yes, true. See, yeah. I, I don't even know the difference. I just felt like this was normal everyday business. Normal as usual. stuff. But I couldn't I couldn't you help it when I saw here. this this headline, sexual gaslighting, and it showed the picture of the bed with the covers thrown back. And I looked at my wife, I said, Hey, is is this what you do when you're farting in bed? <laughs> so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> She I don't know. Me. I don't even know what she that's supposed you. to mean, but I'm going to act like me. I uh, didn't hear that. So glad you guys are here. I uh, hope your weeks have been great. Uh, ours is at mine personally uh, has been pretty decent uh, because of some news we'll talk about soon. But before that, we're going to get into our favorite bit of the show so far. Whoa. Which is Kelly's Corner. Oh, my gosh. Favorite bit. Happy dance. Bless Kelly's corner dance. All right. <laughs> you got to come up with a dance for yourself. Yeah. Uh, the Kelly do. corner dance. <laughs> oh, my God. Bring it back <laughs> to the 90s. Actually, that was, that was almost like the Carlton, some, some right? Some pointers. Yeah. <laughs> do like Brian, a Brian, Brian can guide you. It'll be fine. <laughs> There's no smoking on oh any Delta flight. <laughs> um, so I got a couple of cute little articles uh, that I ran across um, on the interwebs. Before uh, the first you start, one, uh, I just want to say that apparently fireworks are a thing right now outside. Why? I don't know. Um, I don't know why because, right now. Because Thursday. Because August because 5th, you're podcasting. <laughs> August 5th. Apparently that's fireworks day. I just I have to say that. How is it? <laughs> that that frequently we get into our section and we're a sense in and Mike's like, hold up a bit. I'm going to let you finish. But <laughs> but I don't know why everyone's so confused. I mean, think about it. If fireworks we could always add that go to the off list. at the beginning of our podcast, then it's probably because they're really big fans. Yeah, we could add that <gasps> as, a, as a rule. That's what every it time, is. Every time yeah. I see a Kanye's you. We drink. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> That's I'll go a ahead great and, one. Yes. I'll go ahead and start that. Yeah, we do got to add that in. <laughs> I'm and, and I will finish, acknowledge but... that. I will acknowledge that Bruno there said uh, that our fans are so excited for Thursday nights in the podcast that they shoot off fireworks. So yes. literally yes. shooting off fireworks yes. right now. I don't get it. Or maybe it's. <laughs> I guess it's that old original game. Is it gunshots or fireworks? I'm gonna guess with it's fireworks. But well, it's America, well, so a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Back to <laughs> Kelly's Corner. Oh, that's cool. We can continue. <laughs> oh um, <laughs> so this guy in Canada uh, took a, a raspberry pie and coated his own um, package stealing defense system, basically. And he used artificial intelligence to teach it the difference between um, somebody stealing a package or a cat sitting at his doorstep. Um, and it also taught, he also taught the AI to recognize pe- different people's faces. So his face, anybody else who frequently, you know, shows up. Um, he used it to, it, it was genius, different packages, boxes, those, you know, foamy envelopes, envelopes. didn't matter. Um, lots of trial and error. He, tried it on himself 
uh, tricked a lot of his friends into coming over <laughs> and so stealing a package just to see if it would work. Uh, he said, I think in the video, like I owe my neighbors like a lot of drinks because what it does when it detects somebody stealing a package is blares a really loud horn, starts the sprinkler and then puffs uh, flour at the person on their way out. So um, in an attempt to uh, get them to drop the package and run away. Uh, it, this is a, a little bit different than uh, like the glitter bombs and stuff that we've seen in the past, which I love. Those are great. Um, all of those. I, I, anybody who's ever had a package stolen, um, I think can really relate. Um, I just don't know how effective it was, but it was actually pretty genius. <laughs> he, he walks through everything he had to do to train the AI. And it was, I, I thought it was pretty fascinating. And so he basically I, built I, his I like, own PSDS out of a raspberry mm -hmm. Pi. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was pretty cool too, because he definitely had a day drinker moment because he mm. didn't just say that I need to buy my neighbor's drinks. Mm. He says, I'm going to have to buy my neighbor's a couple bottles of wine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I mean, that was perfect. cheers to thought, him. Right. <laughs> I thought it was even better that he's like, it recognizes yeah. my face, but oddly, yeah. it also recognizes Lord Voldemort. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> yeah. It's, this guy is. Good. Yeah. You should check out his YouTube, too. His name is his YouTuber, um, at least his writer, Calm Down. Uh, so he's got some other really cool videos. You should definitely check it out. Yeah, I'll see if uh, I can't get um, uh, a call out. Uh, oh, sorry. Up in mm -hmm. that corner. OK. Over in this corner up here. No, other one. No, that's Kelly's oh. corner. The one you point oh. out. <laughs> that's just Kelly's corner. This the other is way. the YouTube corner <laughs> call out. Yes. So hopefully, yeah. If you see it up here, like and subscribe that guy too. <laughs> and also to us, please. <laughs> Oh my. Yes. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, please. We really need it. <laughs> please. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Just Love do you guys. It. Yeah. Uh, the other uh, thing I wanted to talk about is a movie that I have been really, really looking forward to, and they've moved the date for multiple <laughs> times, and that is Free Sonic Guy. Two. Oh. With yes. <laughs> Sonic 2. <laughs> Free Guy, uh, the Ryan Reynolds movie. It looks so good. Um, if you haven't seen any of the trailers, it is about a guy in a video game. And, you know, every day he just kind of like lives his life and doesn't realize he's in a video game until he runs into a gamer who sees something in him and reaches out to him. Um, the creator of the game wants to destroy the game. And it's basically up to him to save the game and save all the people who are living in the game. How long has this been in production? Because I feel like I've heard this, but it's a been like a long while. time. Yeah. yeah. Years, oh, yeah. Years. I mean, yes. this, yeah. this thing was in the can before COVID. Yeah, uh, they I, they did. I, it wasn't finished, finished, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it was pretty far along before COVID started. And then they just kept delaying. It for they did for COVID. Obvious reasons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was supposed to come out in the um, spring, I think, and then it was supposed to come out in July. And now they've definitely settled. Um, I think it's coming out uh, August 13th. So is it I mean, finished filming? They just haven't yes. released it yet, I guess, because of time. Yeah, it releases. It releases in like a week or two. Yeah, it's like done. By. August 13th. Right. Yeah. But I'm saying that's why they've postponed it, because they just didn't want to. They wanted release to release it, it in theaters. Yeah, yeah. they wanted uh, to release. They didn't want to release it on um, you know, any of the stream. Yes. Yeah, it's it's been done since like spring of, you know, 2020 i mean mm -hmm. very similar like black widow mm -hmm. which when i saw the trailers i was like woohoo that's yeah. may 2020 yay you know and uh, i and yeah, mm, over a year later mm -hmm. in fact actually I, th I think it set a just kind of personal record of the longest time between a lego set coming out for something for a for a specific ip and then that ip basically yeah. releasing Jeez. so because the set's been out for like yeah. massive amount of time for Jeez. that movie <laughs> man well it, it looks really good i may um mask it up and actually go to the theater to watch this one it the last i was <laughs> i am a huge ryan reynolds fan too He's my hall pass. My he's husband so good. It. And he's he's like my husband goes, he's my hall pass, too. Like, he's so funny. He's I mean, yeah. really smart. He's a great businessman. Um, just seems like a really good guy. If 
what we see in the media is true. I mean, he's um, also fairly good to look at for most people. I mean, he is <laughs> that, easy on the, the eyes. That is for sure. Uh, so it, it looks hysterical. If you hadn't seen, haven't seen any of the trailers, you definitely should check them out. They're pretty funny. If you are into games at all, um, it seems like it's it's definitely going to be up your alley. Guess I should go watch the trailer. It is. <laughs> no, actually, I, I would suggest you mm. don't watch. Like if you I made mean, it this yeah. far. Seriously, if you made it yeah. this far and you haven't seen the trailer, don't watch it. Yeah. Just go watch the yeah. movie. I don't remember because if I or not. So if yeah. I guess in that case, I'll just let it go. Mike, maybe I would say we'll have to have like a double movie. date. So I, I, so I was telling my husband about the movie and he was like, I was like, so we should go see it. And he was like, yeah, I was he's like, like, yeah, sure. Whatever. I, I, he's like, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it sounds OK. And it was like, hold on. And I, I was like, come over here, watch this. And he was like, OK, that looks hysterical. <laughs> the way you described oh, wow. it didn't do it justice. I was like, oh, no, yeah. it is. I, I will agree the way you described <laughs> yeah. it. Did that do yeah, justice? Sorry, just just <laughs> trust me. Don't take my word for it. <laughs> Go look at the trailer. Yeah, right. it's OK. <laughs> it has some stuff to it. Video games. Yeah, it's it's kind of cute. Yeah, you want to check it out? I mean, don't worry about Listen, it. It's probably not yeah. a super exciting. She said everything yeah. she had to say to sell it. It has Ryan Reynolds in it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't need more than that. Ooh, Parker. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, uh, that's what she does <laughs> that's yeah. all I do <laughs> it's good it's good all right well let's get into the news live from the studio of sass gaming <laughs> oh man that's broadcasting great. from the belly of this goldfish <laughs> so bonus points for anyone who knows why we have a goldfish <laughs> the reason why i've been excited this week is because of a new game that got released uh on day one on xbox game pass also on steam uh, obviously uh xbox game pass it's free steam you have to pay for it uh but the reason why i'm actually excited about it is it's actually a really cool game and i I'm talking about cyber. No, sorry, not cyberpunk. <laughs> I'm talking about the ascent. So the ascent is a game that's based on the cyberpunk uh, style, um, but it does. OK, disclaimer, the game is janky. There are some things we'll talk about, but the game does a very good job at depicting the cyberpunk uh, style and also the the game like the level design uh, is really well done uh it is a third person almost like isometric style game where you control uh, your character and uh your rate like the the way that you aim and such is uh from the right stick you actually can turn it 360 degrees so whatever <laughs> analog stick whatever direction you point that in is how you actually shoot the direction you shoot in um but it is super fun and what um one of the one things the reason I wanted to bring this up is because, you know, we'd, we'd went through the whole cyberpunk thing uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then eventually the game came out and we were it was weeks? so overhyped months, and months, months, months and, months and months. months. <laughs> uh, the game was so overhyped by CD Projekt Red and just by the media that and know, us. the game and us and the game could have came out uh, as a, you know, nine out of ten. And uh... we would have still been like, this is. Nothing. I'd like to point out that if we go back to those podcasts, I was actually dunking on Cyberpunk like the entire month leading up to it, saying that <laughs> the preliminary videos we saw made it look like it was going to be a hot pile of garbage. <laughs> and lo and behold, guess who was, was right? <laughs> so that one guy also, on the Internet with that stolen copy of the game. <laughs> I also, yeah, I also really. think it's really cute watching Zycia just try to describe the concept of an isometric twin stick shooter twin stick shooter yeah there we it's go it's adorable yes. so this game the re another reason why i think it is doing well and i'll explain how it's doing well in a second is uh this game's called by ne uh, neon giants the publishers or the developers of this game and i had really not heard too much about this game yeah we heard a couple things in the past like uh you know a year ago and they were talking about the game was coming this is the stuff they're gonna be doing um, but it definitely was not like a triple a release like oh my god this game's coming for years we have to worship it forever um, so when we actually got to the game, uh, for one, uh, Xbox Game Pass, Microsoft picked it up as a free launch title, uh, which on day one, which they've done that for a few different games in the past, which is really neat, especially for day one. Uh, and the game on Steam, I think it's only like twenty three ninety nine right now. It's on sale. Uh, and I think it's twenty five bucks, maybe twenty nine. 
I have to look it up exactly, but uh, it's not that expensive. Um, but again, all of the elements of cyberpunk. So you have this really great level design where they have so many details in all of the like the environments. So there's so many different levels, uh, the way that they, they use the, uh, the different depths of the background. I can't remember the word they use for that uh, in video game terms, but uh, there's um, they they can really capture that element. It, you really do feel like you are in this other world of like just this stack like structure of uh, like large buildings all stacked up with like different levels of like, you know, like every certain level of the building is like a different city. So you get to like level 13 and that's like another city. Then you go to like another you know, level 20 and that's like a whole different city. Uh, and there's just so many different things. Like as you're playing through some of these quests uh, that you start off with, you actually venture through a lot of these towns that we just run through. Like the, the, the quest says just to keep going. And you're like running through this secure town, like all these vendors and all these different things. And you're just kind of blowing past it. And you're like, wow, that's insane that like we can just like we're not even going to touch this area here at all. We're just going to drive through it, like run through it. Uh, I know when I say we, it is a multiplayer game. So you can play the single player, uh, which is neat, uh, but you can also play this up to uh, four people total. So up to three other friends of yours can join. So it is a neat experience. I just wanted to at least shout out to it for it, at least on my opinion of what the game is doing and what it's doing really well. Um, but I want to mention some articles here quickly before I get too much on well, a tangent. Uh, so, it, it looks very much like a Diablo. Is it very much is so. It, so, so, so? So it's kind of a looter shooter. So it is. Um, and when I say that it is an RPG um, at true of heart, like when I was playing it, it definitely reminded me of almost like a path of exile where I'm running around with my friends. The only difference is I'm shooting and I'm not hack and slashing. Um, but it's very much that you go around. You, there's a bunch of crates you can crash into and gather different supplies, different uh, like actual components that you can use to upgrade your weapons later at the vendors or even uh, different weapons or different uh, skill points. Cybernetic where you can, implants. Cybernetic so like, implants. Is the passive skill tree like the same as Path of Exile? It's definitely not. It does not have the <laughs> passive skill tree, but it does have um, it does have a not a skill tree, but you can uh, upgrade your skills based on skill points every time you level up. And there's about, I think, nine or ten of them um, that you can put your points into and then also picking up armor and your... Uh, so you have, like, you know, your like upper armor, your leg armor, uh, your head headset. All of those things also have different skills along with it um, that can also boost or take away some of the skill points based on the type of character that you're trying to build. Uh, because, again, it's an RPG at heart, so you do have the ability to make, like, a tank uh, where you can like really buff up the armor and really just you know hit up your hit points and really just go in guns blazing um, with a shotgun or something. And then you can also have your characters who are more like DPS sitting back with a long uh, rifle and just trying to like you know throw projectiles and things like that to try to keep up with uh, the, the crowd control. So it's it's a it's a really neat game. Um, the some of the articles that we had seen this week. So so, so one of the things. It's hard to have a discussion when you keep wrapping everything up there. He is. Uh, so one of, the, one of the things that I that I thought was really cool while I was watching uh, some gameplay of that was there's there's a with the ambiance of this whole like rundown like underneath this because you're like in our in our ecology you're in this giant arcology right and it's you know run down and you're, you seem to be in the bowels of it you know like the not the sewers but like like uh, almost like the almost spoilers. like the cell. <laughs> You well, are in almost, the bowels, actually. Well, that's what I'm saying. You're in the bowels, not like not necessarily the sewers, but more like like the steam pipe tunnels and, and all the maintenance type levels. Seems, well, you're seems like kind of in the sewers, like the first. I mean, this is no spoilers. If you start playing this well, tutorial but, portion of this actually regardless, is to like check on the trash. And that's part of your job. So regardless, uh, it's cool because you go around and there's these workers, these robot workers that are just like. They're just trying to do their shit day to day and they're sitting there and they're doing their stuff and you come along and they don't react to you too much. But then these things that are whatever is happening that you're trying to take out, uh, they show up and then the robot workers lose 
their shit. Yes. And they they book ass. They run like it's every time I saw it, I was like, no, that's hilarious. And like, seriously, when they're 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 not just like robots, like duh, 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 I'm running like they book ass so much that they go to get a to hit a quarter and they slip and like fall down a little bit on the quarter. And then they get up and they keep running. Yeah. So and that <laughs> is a good, interesting point you brought hysterical. up because the NPCs in this game, there's a lot like like the the way that the cities are built, like the NPCs are just around talking. Uh, and if you get close to some of them, you can see like the word like captions of like what they're talking about with their friend. Uh, and then some of them will actually give you random quest. Uh, there are um, so the random NPCs you're talking about are about like, you know, collecting trash, like doing their job or whatever. And yeah. as soon as something pops off, uh, they do start running. Uh, and they, the thing they, is, they um, the first part is there is no friendly fire. So you can feel like you can just shoot your partner and it's no problem. They're not going to get hurt because. Oh, oh how does that, that feel? Phoenix, yeah, it's great to shoot your partner and not kill them. Hmm. He doesn't know, actually. Operation Tango. Watch it. <laughs> yeah. So the the one thing, though, when you do get in a gunfight is these guys take off and you can kill these NPCs. So I've gotten to the point there. I haven't so far. I have not noticed any tracker or any sort of um, like awareness the game has of you killing these NPCs, these little, innocent little robot NPCs. stick figures go across um, the top of the screen is every time you kid another one. But but <laughs> I, I do feel bad when I do, because the thing is, in most games like this, you come into an area where you have your gun out because you typically go into a safe zone. Your guns put away. You can't do anything. As soon as you leave that area, your gun comes back out and you're ready to shoot things. So you're constantly running into all these different bandits that you're like wanting to shoot. But you'll go into zones where you have your gun because it's not a safe zone. But that doesn't mean that everybody there is like trying to kill you. So you'll run around and like as soon as like someone freaks out, they start running and you shoot them. And you're like, oh, oh, my bad, dude. My bad. I didn't mean to like, I'm sorry. And like and that just happens through all these battles. And I'm sitting there like, oh, I feel so bad for this because like I'm just shooting these innocent people. And I'm just it sucks. But it is. Uh, okay, so them all. less less obstacles. Also, <laughs> I don't understand you saying that they run away. I thought that based on cyberpunk 2077 when there's a shootout in the middle of the streets people just cover their head and then never do anything else for the rest of their lives yeah and, right? unfortunately <laughs> this isn't as realistic or as that game. they should uh they should contact cd project red and be like yo you guys need some help like <laughs> yeah it's putting in how like npcs react to to shootings the we, we can give you a hand it took us like 10 hours it's, it's cool yeah the other thing too good. is the other part of the cyberpunk is the cybernetics <laughs> Uh, and he kind of mentioned that earlier that you can find them. Um, what? What do you have? Oh, well, keep going. Fish. Oh, OK. Oh, so finger gun. So literally playing this game was like everything that I remember being promised about cyberpunk was like this game. So like, again, came out of nowhere, didn't really think this was going to be a big deal. And then I'm getting all the things that I was promised. So I go into a cybernetic shop. I can purchase the augmentations that I want to get uh, based on the money, the credits that I have. Uh, and then I literally sit down on the, on the surgery table and they install those cybernetics into me, whatever, which ones I've purchased. And you get up to four. Uh, you can also change your character's appearance based on gender or just looks. Uh, if you started the game, because you build your character at the beginning of the game. And uh, there's some not I wouldn't say it's completely customizable, but there's there's a lot of options you can for, for a basic character. And uh, and then. You know, during the game, you can literally just change all those character that change that change that appearance again later, uh, along with adding in the augmentations. Um, there's weapon shops, there's upgrade weapon shops, there's uh, a bar where you can pick up bounties. There's uh, what else is there? There's like a bunch of other so, little mini things so you can check out. It's the Armor. other thing that you haven't met that at least I didn't catch so far on it being a cyberpunk game is how is the hacking? So the hacking so far, uh, I've only used it uh, realistically. I've only used it at the intro of the game uh, when they explain it. So I don't know if we're going to touch on that more or if that's going to be, you know, maybe something that we'll pick up later. But uh, the as a net runner, right, like that kind of type of character, it, it's not very um, it's not very difficult. Like you literally just hold down a button uh, for a few seconds and then you see like a wave go out. And that's like you your ability to hack something like it hacks whatever's in the, in the area, and then that comes available if you have the right level to unlock a door or whatever. Uh, and the, some of those levels, I think it's like some of the things are just locked, like you really just can't go through them, uh, at least at the time when I played. Maybe later they unlock as you progress, but 
Um, but ultimately, yeah, I mean, just the aesthetic of like being in a cyberpunk Blade Runner style, Fifth Element style game. Uh, hmm. These are like these are definitely the feels that I get from playing this game. Nice. So, yeah, I looked up the price for you. It's normally twenty nine ninety nine. It's currently on sale for twenty six ninety nine. But Day Drinker said it should be. Twenty seventy seven. It really should. <laughs> that would have been a hell of a dig. They, yes, that's a missed yes. opportunity right there. Mm-hmm. They should have done that. So <laughs> going on to the sales uh, for this game, because like I said, it came out of nowhere. We're kind of just like checking this out. You know, I'm playing it free on Xbox Game Pass, but you can buy it on Steam and such. Actually, on, on Xbox, you can buy it, too, if you want. Um, but they actually announced. Uh, so the publisher is Curve and uh, so Neon Giants, the developer, uh, they announced that the Ascent, uh, this game just got released like I think last week uh, or end of the 29th of July, I think it was. Um, it's already earned more than five million dollars in sales on its opening weekend. And that's Jeez. obviously not including the Xbox Game Pass because people are playing it for free. Yeah. So as far as paid uh, actual games sold, um, they've already made over five million dollars on it, and it's launched on PCs, but on Xbox, Xbox Series X, um, and like I said, we get it on part of the Game Pass subscription, uh, and it's got just a lot of good things going with it. Um, but I do want to talk about the negative because there are wah, some things wah. about this game that uh, can frustrate you and potentially will make you quit for a little bit. Um, I would suggest if you are bothered by some jank then maybe wait like a month or so um because it there is some jank so some of the jank the two two biggest things uh that i've encountered uh that i've personally encountered is the biggest one is multiplayer so getting to actually play online with your friends uh they're having some issues with the netcode and some issues with just the game in general i don't know if it's actually a microsoft issue because it's on the xbox game pass and they're trying to, to do things um but the main issue with this is that typically when you try to launch a game and you have your friends online you're ready to play you'll see that there's like no way to start the game like you say host game online and then nothing happens and, it, and then or you invite someone and it says loading and then they never join they have to alt f4 out of the game Mm-hmm. So from looking online and some from with the some of the troubleshooting that me and my friends have done so far is that it seems like if you're going to play this game, uh, I left some steps on a Reddit earlier today, but basically make sure the game is up to date. So make sure Xbox Game Pass says the game is up to date, then go to Windows Store and see if the game is up to date because they're constantly making patches and trying to fix things for this game, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, so make sure that's number one. Number two, if you are using Uh, any other type of network interface, any other adapter. Uh, So if you have like a VPN or if you have a loop back for like, if you use like packet capture software, things like that, uh, make sure to disable them in your settings. Uh, For whatever reason, uh, this game is looking for one and only one uh, network interface uh, for this game to work. So we had an issue the other day, a friend of mine couldn't get it to work. Uh, He had multiple different adapters Uh, after he disabled all of them, except the one that actually runs the internet. uh, We were able to get connected with no problem. Uh, So Teredo is a big thing that a lot of people talk about with Xbox game pass online. uh, And then you look up different videos and things. They always talk about Teredo for Microsoft tunneling. And I don't personally have Teredo working. So mine doesn't say that Teredo is working. It doesn't say that I'm connected to the Xbox uh, network or whatever. Uh, And in this sense, like it still works for me. So the, the thing that he tried to fix was Torito when well, he even got it working and it still wouldn't connect. So after he did the networking, actual disabling those other um, adapters, that's when it actually started working. So these are things that I think are going to be improved or fixed eventually in the future. Um, but it can be frustrating right now. If you're trying to play with friends, especially uh, that you may run into these kind of things that it just may not work. And you just feel like this is just a hot pile of mess. The second thing that uh, is mostly janky is it it doesn't feel like it's it doesn't feel like a triple A game. It's not. It's not a triple A game. It doesn't feel like it's 100 percent finished, Um, but it does have enough jank or not enough jank for me to continue playing it and feel like I'm actually still my my excitement in the game is still above my like frustration. 
And and some of the things I'm talking about is some of the shooting uh, with using the the twin stick, like actually using the right analog stick to try to control your aiming, uh, can kind of feel slightly off. Uh, and, and there is an, a, an ability that you're actually your skill that you're supposed to increase that can actually help that. So that may be part of it. Uh, but the other thing, too, is like looking at textures. So sometimes you'll see like a plain wall uh, that's supposed to have like graffiti on it. And you may see the graffiti kind of like twitching in and out of the of the actual um, object. Uh, so little things like that, like will kind of, you know, take you out of that immersion. But ultimately, I, I've overlooked that stuff. Uh, to just continue playing because it's just been so fun. The lore in the game uh, is very uh, well done. Uh, you do have uh, some, not options, you get presented with dialogues that say um, like five different questions you can ask to the person that's giving you the quest or whatever, and you can totally skip them or you can do that. Uh, and that's um, some of the things you can do. There's no real like, you know, decide your own fate kind of thing. Um, but the cutscenes are well done. Uh, I haven't seen any issues with the cutscenes. Like usually in some games you'll see like, you know, things happening in the cutscene, like characters continue off, just keep continues and stuff. And like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> um, so that's the next thing I heard uh, rumors. So, <clears throat> so the DLS isn't actually bother me. Neither does the ray tracing, but this is a concern for most people. Uh, the DLSS and the ray tracing by default on Xbox game pass has been disabled. Uh, oh. if you look in the menu, uh, you'll notice these are grayed out. Uh, and it's not something that's happening on Steam. So on Steam, if you get the version through Steam, you'll see this with no problem. Uh, but the actual Xbox Game Pass version is having issues. So uh, they've Dang, actually couldn't land the contract for DLSS. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah, that's the Just downside. Should have cleared you know, it with legal deal. first. All right, so, guys, you can have our game on your pass, but no DLSS and no, no ray tracing. Deal no with. DLSS. <laughs> So they've already come out and said that they were going to fix this. And uh, they actually tweeted out um, the other day on the 31st. This was like two days after they released it. So we're working on bringing them up to parity. It was it it, it was it was uh, like I said, it was a couple of days before they kind of addressed this, which really got the Internet in the uproar uproar, because all the Internet saw was if you buy the game on Steam, you get Mm. all the features. But if you right. get the free, again, it's not free on Game Pass. You pay a subscription yeah. for Game Pass. But a, a lot of people see that as like a free game at that point. So if you get the free version of the game, you get a, v- a version with a whole bunch of features disabled. And that's Kids what people days. were seeing. Yeah. Mm. In my days, you bought a game or you got it on Game Pass. So it was technically free. And then two months in, they delete all of your progress and don't do anything <laughs> for you. And half the game systems are still missing. Well, so whoa. they, they oh tweeted God. out <laughs> on the 31st. You will never let that go, will I you? I wouldn't either. God, and I, I wouldn't yeah, well, either. Yeah. yeah. You know I mean, I mean, Outriders <sighs> is almost dead now and you just keep poking that thing. Oh, well, so, I mean, he's been so long, so so many hours, like <clears throat> weeks. On it. They flew too close to the sun. I guess that's the problem with having a studio <sighs> called People Can Fly. Wow. <laughs> it's a little Icarus action. Okay, so <laughs> Neon Giant the tweeted fact. out and yeah, they internet said made, Internet made this a bigger thing than it really was. Right. They they tweeted out and they said, we are working on bringing them up to parity, uh, which referring to both versions of the game on both platforms of the game. It says that level load is new to me, though. Uh, it is news to me, though. Thanks for bringing it up to my attention in response to a person who said that there was issues with the level uh, loading and taking very extreme, like long times to even get into a game. Uh, I personally haven't ran into that, but I'm sure, like, like I said, with some of the jank that's in this game, I wouldn't be surprised if that was an issue. Uh, the other thing, too, uh, is it's not it doesn't seem very optimized uh, for at least the PC. Um there are times where and like, I don't have like a top top end PC at this point now, but it still runs most games on high. Um, but even with that, like playing some of these uh, scenes in the game where there's like explosions, my whole screen just like locks up and I can still hear the music and everything. But it like once the smoke clears, like I'm good. Um, it doesn't happen often enough to where I'm like pissed, but it does happen occasionally. Uh, and again, it just doesn't it's not enough to like really make me not want to play anymore. Um, so Ultimately, I would say check it out. If you do have this game free on Xbox Game Pass, go check it out. If you want to pay for it on Steam uh, or from Xbox, uh, I would say wait about another month um, just so it can they can put out some more patches and make sure the game is really getting polished. But ultimately, 
a hundred percent has scratched the itch of the cyberpunk world that I was trying to get into uh, back nice. in uh, you know November of December of last year when we were promised a false hope. So Still I uh, waiting on that uh, official roadmap with an actual false. expansion. Yeah, there was actually a roadmap someone else made today. I saw an article on that. It said, uh, since the <laughs> since CD Projekt Red won't make one, I guess we will. And they put it on there, like this huge patch of just like patching um, on the roadmap. So anyway, that is uh, The Ascent. Um, again, go check it out. It's uh, If you're into the cyberpunk world and you like RPGs and it's third person, and you want to play with your friends, it's a great game to check out uh, because it's pretty entertaining. Sick. Awesome. All right. But we're Sick. done with the positivity now. Yeah, I can't well, wait to tell you guys more about the Ascent. Now let's bring everybody down. <laughs> Welcome That's to right. the part where we ruin your Bruno's lives. back. It's baby. like a roller coaster. <laughs> yes. like we're going to bring it up and then we're going to drop it. Can we're we gonna... get some F-bombs too? Because that would make my day. No, no, I don't need F-bombs. You know yes. You know what? This this studio has gotten so pathetically sad that they're, they're not even worthy of F-bombs at this point. They're just mm. a disappointment. They don't even make me angry. Uh, we're yeah. going to talk about Blizzard. Um, they're in the news because something potentially good happened on the third. I mean, it can't be bad. I don't think it couldn't be worse. But uh, Blizzard's CEO has officially Whoa. resigned as of August third. Uh, so J. Allen Brack is gone. He has stepped down as the leader of the studio. Um, he's actually being replaced by not one but two people: um, mm-hmm. Jen O'Neill and Mike Ybarra um both people have some pretty extensive careers um in large tech companies in general um so they're not they're not a uh, shy to the industry <laughs> that threw me off i wasn't expecting it <laughs> but um <laughs> so so they are replacing him going forward and they will be leading the company one of them has been there for a while she's been leading up development for I think going on a year now. Um, her leadership is part of the Diablo and Overwatch franchises. Um, so that's cool. Hopefully things get better. Either way, if you're a fan of Blizzard as a whole, I wouldn't expect too much out of them. And if you thought Diablo 4 was coming out next year, yeah. Well, you yeah, have a, that's not no. going to happen. You have a phone, right? Yeah, we have. Ooh, oh, yeah, I forgot ooh, about Immortals. Wow. That's also probably right out the window. <laughs> um, well, on top of that, after this was announced, if you guys haven't been listening to our previous podcast, um, they were already being sued by the state of California. Um, and if we go back as an example to Cyberpunk 2077, there was an article we talked about where the investors um, put together a class action lawsuit against the company well that's happening again but this time for blizzard um there's a class action lawsuit being formed <clears throat> for um their investors to essentially sue them for um, misleading them misleading mm. the investors on the trajectory of the company and the goings on um and kind of it's just a, a blanket you the things you gave us were false you didn't do your due diligence as the leaders of the company or the company in general um and now we're the ones having to foot the bill for it so you owe us it's like that James uh-huh. Franco gif, like first time. <laughs> James yeah, Franco gif. Yeah, and some of this is response <laughs> to uh, a number of things that have been happening over the last uh, week or so. Just, you know, we we had all this break. The CEO had came out and said, "Hey, here's a letter to the employees after the disastrous letter that was sent out by the." Uh, uh, lady that we won't even go into too much, but he basically sent out this letter and said, hey, you know, we've been t- taking swift action to be the compassionate, caring company they came to work for and to ensure a safe environment. We'll do anything possible to make sure that together we improve and build the kind of inclusive workspace that is essential to foster creativity and inspiration. <clears throat> Literally, the next sentence. I have asked the law firm Wilmer Hale to conduct a review of our policies and procedures to ensure that we maintain the best practices and oh have a respectful, inclusive workplace. And they go on to say, we encourage anyone to have uh, with experience that you believe violates our policies. Anyway, you make you unco- or that make you uncomfortable in the workplace to use any of our many existing channels for reporting 
or reach out to Stephanie. You know it, what makes me or, uncomfortable? She, hold on. Reach <sighs> out to Stephanie. She and her team at William Hale, a law firm. Go ahead. I think that's what I, you're about yeah, to talk about. I was going to say, what makes me uncomfortable is telling me, uh, saying I should feel comfortable reporting my harassment to a law firm that the company has hired. Yes. Yeah, totally. A safe. law That'd firm. Be Who else are you going to report it to? Obviously. Yeah, sounds fun. I mean, when you make your report, you have to have the company's best interests at heart. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, if they really, if they really, really cared, they'd be bringing in. A law firm. Neutral third party <laughs> consultants or. Yeah, they know, did. Yeah. You see, uh, <laughs> law the firm, part that you're missing consultant. is consultants, Blizzard. Law firms, so, lawyers, you know, same thing. Uh, so Blizzard's whole deal is tomato, creating tomato. games where there's a faction against another faction. Mm. And they just, <laughs> they want their games to be the embodiment of them as a company. So now you know where it comes from. The Horde and the Alliance are actually just the executives mm. versus their employees. Wow. And the law firm well, is yeah. like a raid boss. P- wow. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. the, the metaphor there was real. I didn't realize. Well, and. Sorry, who's talking? <laughs> I don't know. Not he me. Paused. It was weird. I, thought he I think it was for you, Mike. <laughs> I was oh, going to no. let you finish. I did. That was it. I was done. <laughs> He's like the metaphor. You were going to let me finish. I said the metaphor was real. That's all. It was it was real. Yes, that's mm. very. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's a very good observation. It was, in fact, something that I actually said. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, yeah, and saying that it's a raid boss is is quite <laughs> apropos, boss. considering that wow. this is apparently, allegedly, a law firm that had been brought on by Amazon and Uber to mm. try to come in and help them tamp down and stop any type of unionization within their company. I wasn't um, also a law firm that uh, Cosby used. Oh, I would not be shocked. Oh, my. I would not be shocked. I heard that somewhere. Yeah. No, I I, I, I gapped. Oh, God. Oh, if you are working at Blizzard Activision. GTFO now. (laughs) Well, wow. I mean, it's hard to say because, I mean, they really wanted to work there because they they love mm-hmm. the IP. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, so Man, I don't blame you know, the workers. So, so, some people have well, said things. Like, no, I do not. I, 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 and I wouldn't be. I'm not blaming the workers at all. The ones that the, are this is a Yeah, this is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I am blaming the workers who are running around grabbing nuts and, you know, drinking and doing their cube crawl. I, I mean, am definitely <laughs> blaming them. But what if they grab a, M&M's? Yeah. <laughs> or pretzels. You know. I mean, pretzels. Are yeah. Good it doesn't have to be nuts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but this is definitely a top down decision and uh, top down. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a, that was the problem is there were too yeah. many top down decisions. That that yeah. is literally what I was going to say. <laughs> but ah, yes, you you're right. Beat that one. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, no, it's it, it, <laughs> in. It, 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 we're not making fun of this. This is no, we're, this is, yeah, we're we making really light of the situation like and I, yes. we don't mean that. Because in any sense, is, but yes. right. Like this is the third time we've talked about it. There's just mm. new news coming out. We don't mean yeah. disrespect no, we're just, to anybody. This is a serious. This is definitely a serious topic. Yes, but yeah, yeah I agree. If there's I think, any I think way, it's great. Yeah. It's it's like that that this is finally coming out. Like every time a new story breaks out, I'm like, this is this is awesome. And like. Like I said, it's like finally holding these gaming companies to their standards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. The, mm-hmm. the trouble is, though, is that typically who gets hurt by this? Because like people who are outraged, like mm-hmm. we have been yes. very many people like us, like how do we vote? We vote with our wallet, mm-hmm. like sure. cancel yep. that yep. subscription. I'm not buying any more of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And that typically doesn't hurt the perpetrators here. Right. The executives, even if the company closed down, the executives go to another company and they keep doing the same things. Or even if they it's, didn't, they it, still have millions and billions of dollars. Yeah. Like it's whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, it it hurts the devs, mm-hmm. the actual yeah. people working on this stuff, the people who hard, are like, hard workers. 
Super. have put love into these games. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe not all of the games or expansions or stuff like that turned out the way we wanted in some. And hello, maybe, well, maybe some of the reason why some of these are lower quality is because of exactly. the environment. Yeah, sorry, Day Drinker mm -hmm. kind of stole. No, your no, no, no. One. I was no, you keep going. Keep going. No, yeah, you're saying the same thing. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's no, yeah, a you're reflection right. of the, what's the, going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but. But that's the thing is the employees will move on and and go to companies that are hiring like crazy, hopefully, <sighs> like Amazon Game Studios, which well, might be yeah, worse, sure. or Riot Games. They could use it. Oh, the Riot, thing is, Riot yeah. isn't all that much better. I'm no, saying, Riot Amazon has gotten Game better, Studio. though, since mm. their, their instance two years ago. That's the thing is Riot Riot's entire ordeal in comparison to Blizzard is is much smaller and was handled not fantastic but it was at least handled like they they treated it like properly they didn't go yeah we're gonna need all of our employees to complain to a law firm going forward mm -hmm. they were like yeah, no, no that's a good point like we messed up and then tencent came yeah. out and they were like yep. yeah we own this company and as such we've talked to them and all the founders of riot games and the co-founder are aware of what will happen if these actions don't get like rectified mm -hmm. so the company actually was like rectified. we should probably stop being yeah. Yeah. grabbing garbage. nuts yeah. i'll say actually right now <laughs> amazon game studio or amazon in a whole entity is probably like sitting there going like like it's like the gif of the guy with the dollar generals like he's just like <laughs> yeah sitting behind the tree because like think about it i mean they're trying to release new world right and this in this game that's having yeah. major issues for a while now they're trying to get into the mmo space well you have a company mm -hmm. <laughs> that's been the number one for so long now with game devs that most likely want to find a new job so uh, yeah the problem with that like, is, is most of those top people are already poached in the last six months to a year by Riot Games, who's announced that they're in full production of their own MMORPG. I mean, that's fine. Um, I'm just saying, but even Project even seven, regular, it is. you know, regular employees that yeah. are still working on games like they could use any help they could get Boy, over at New World. What I was, they do the really initial point I was trying to get at is that it, even with all the negatives, it's still overall better that this happens yes. to the magnitude yeah. that it's happening than it than it, not, because it's mm. it's already showing like people are like cyberpunk. 2077 to CD Projekt Red being held to the standards that they were held to yeah. after the release of their game and Blizzard being handled uh, and like <laughs> held to the standards that they're being held to at mm -hmm. the same time are actually starting to make a I, difference. I, yeah. I think this is more way more important than CD Projekt Red because CD Projekt Red still had record sales, had record bonuses, mm -hmm. and they just like it just dropped out of the news and people just went on the same as always. This I think is this is going to be the closest and hopefully they go through with it that they're going to get unions in protecting these people a lot better. And I'm I am one of the last people that you would call a union person. Right. I am. I've seen hey Brian, unions you're kind of like good. a union I've person. Seen, <laughs> I've seen unions do like terrible where they're they're just there to collect a paycheck themselves and they really don't do all that much because uh, they're an organization like any other organization and you can have good ones and bad ones. And but typically, though, when you first form a union. In a particular sector, it's going to do a lot of good and it it's kind of overdue for the software industry. Mm -hmm if yeah. you ask me especially with well, all the differences between studios and regions and everything like getting it on the same page would be good or having some it's sort a shame. of like formality it's just a, it's a shame that there has to be an entity a separate entity that's protecting the developers protecting yes. all of the yeah, well, employees that's the thing is there doesn't it just yeah, because it these companies yeah. haven't been held accountable for mm -hmm. so long yeah. And yeah. releasing yeah. garbage content and treating their fan base and the, their consumers poorly is exactly what ends up leading into mm -hmm. them treating their employees like garbage because they can get away with it. They know yeah. they can get away with it because they're big and everybody wants to work for them. That's yep. the dream. So you just go there and you deal with the abuse because you're you're living your dream until you legitimately end up hating the thing that you dreamt about yeah. doing. Well, which yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, imagine all of these. Yes. yes. Imagine all of the large corporations, you know, around the world right now, if there was no such thing as unions, like, do you think they would still be like the great companies that they are? Probably not. I <laughs> have to be well, laws I, again, it it depends on the time and the place and when. 
there there are industries where the unions very much have succumbed and in some ways become almost as bad as the things that they were trying to protect the employees mm-hmm. against. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know that the right answer is a union, honestly. No, uh, I mean, the right answer is just treat your people with respect mm-hmm. and stop treating them like garbage. Yeah. Be, yes. be a good human being. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you can make a lot of a lot of money and be very, very rich without treating your employees like garbage. Listen, uh, Day Drinker and mm. Zycia just said it the best. There's just nothing else that needs to be said at that point. Mm. Yeah. You just you so, just stop being a dick. Yes. So to quote Keanu Reeves, so to quote Keanu Reeves, <laughs> yes. I was also raised to treat people exactly how I would like to be treated by others. It's called respect. I literally read that earlier, so I felt like that that fitted perfectly. Slowly but surely getting to be adequate. (laughs) Oh, Uh, man. Let's move on. (laughs) Sony released their their kind of in their beta program and uh, went a little bit further even after that. And finally said, hey, guess what? That feature that we promised you from launch, even before launch, where you could just put your own drives into the PlayStation 5 and expand it. We're finally releasing it. We're going to let you do it. Like they they literally had a block in the system that if you put your own drive into the system before now, it would say, nope, sorry, there's a, you know, a drive. You have to disconnect it before all boot. Uh this caught a lot of people off guard, including the manufacturers of the drives. Whoa. And Sony wasn't going to go so far as to tell you what drives would work with it. They simply gave you some specifications. <laughs> now, if you didn't drop completely off the map and off this podcast when you were listening to Mike's talk about specifications and technical things earlier on, about like networks and tornado tunnels and all this stuff. Oh, was it that bad? This did I, did I... <laughs> it was. It was bad. Like I, I almost, I bad. almost went into a coma. And I that's like when he was specs. like, "I'm just going over here. I'm going to wow. play with this thing. And I'm going to start some. I'm going to start. You know, random I, sounds. I promise to <laughs> never enough. try to be Brian again. I'm so sorry. Oh He's like, "Don't step on my oh, CTO you. shoes. I wear good. those shoes. That was good. That was good. That was good." Uh, if that wasn't bad and got you to stop listening, oh my goodness, Sony's specification. Like, seriously, could you imagine being the grandmother who purchased this for their grandson and their grandson being or granddaughter 12? Mm. And maybe maybe 12 is even too old for this because there are some there's some technical 12 year olds out there. Let me tell you, mm. uh, my son's but, like one, one and a half and he's pretty technical already. That's true. He, he can he can rock that iPad. Uh, but no, when they're like, oh, you can expand the storage because it's first of all, let's Zeissi would never own an iPad. (laughs) Well, that and then he also wouldn't let his son have an iPad because that's whack. Sorry, I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm like, and I can get a joke in. So this (laughs) was good. That was a good one. It was good. That was good. (laughs) I mean, it kind of pointed out the irony of what I was saying, (laughs) but uh, so, you know, these these poor people trying to like like because. With the operating system, it's only like a three hundred and eighty four gig hard drive in the PlayStation five. It's teeny tiny. And when you take the operating system out of it, if you put all of Call of Duty on that thing, it's about the only yeah. game That's all you can fit. That's funny. Yeah, but don't put Call of Duty on it because that's Activision and we yeah. don't support Which that. Are, yes. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> now, PlayStation 4 games can play on a USB connected external drive, but PlayStation 5 games cannot. They can only go off this internal drive. So they had this expansion port. They finally said, you can use it. They said, by the way, the interface is PCIe Gen 4 X4 M.2 NVMe SSD. The capacity can be 250 gig up to four terabytes. <laughs> cooling structure (laughs) using an m2 ssd on your ps5 console requires effective heat dissipation with a cooling structure such as a heat sink 
if you attach one to your M2 SSD yourself, either in a single sided format or double sided format, there's also M2 SSDs that have cooling structures such as heat sinks built in. Right. OK, sequential read speed, 5500 megabytes per second or faster is recommended. Like. No, module width. 22 millimeters in width, 25 We've millimeters is not <laughs> supported. Is there music to play when Brian starts going into like a tangent? <laughs> it's not play? a tangent. This oh is actually gosh. the story. It's like he's letters like giddy. and numbers. He's like giddy about it, though. That's the thing. It's yeah. like he's no, like, I'm, 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 I'm incensed by like, how do they expect the average person to get through this? Literally, yes. 22 width, millimeter width is okay. 25 millimeter width is not supported. <laughs> like seriously, no form smoking. factors, socket types, like it goes on and on. They even give you like the total size of your cooling structure. I'll give you the total size of my cooling structure. That was, that was oh, beat me it has to it. be less than 110 <laughs> millimeters or 4.33 inches. Zycia. Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he, he can pull that off. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Uh, they go into detail <laughs> of length, width, girth. I mean, height. Uh, I don't know how. Girl, that was the funniest thing you've said all week. That was great. <laughs> we were talking about the girth of his pole earlier, so it's just like a whole thing. It works. Oh, man. Now, talking there, about the new, guys, the, the new Elgato. Like, now we're talking about your the, poles. OK. Yeah, the new Elgato <laughs> mic stand that he got. We, yeah, but, um, it's actually interesting. You know, there, there's a couple other articles and tweets and stuff like this. It's there are a number of drives that fit this. The funny thing is, is that Sony says, oh, and by the way, even if you get a drive that meets or exceeds these specifications. Your game, PlayStation 5, may not run as efficiently, quickly or as cleanly as it does on the internal drive. So you can swipe right on any drive you want that fits those right. parameters, but it doesn't mean that you're actually going to stay with said drive because that drive may they, not perform the way you want it no, to. No, you'll stay with it, but it like won't ever do anything with you. Ratchet you and Clank to. will have problems <laughs> warping from one level to the next. So Possibly. 10 years later, Maybe. you're still Possibly. with the drive. I wonder, though, See, I wonder if that's just them like covering okay. their, their ass. I like, think it is. Maybe drive. Like, okay. uh, maybe your drive isn't as dependable in our opinion or as stable as the one that we know we have internally. So we don't know which yeah. which or type you're going to put in there. So we can't right. traces, assure you. It's external hardware. They can't they yeah. can't support Or the traces that. are too long going to that. This or is CYA. it yeah. overheats. Yeah. Or but, uh, the it's explanation like a deviation to me is what that sounds like. It does miserable. sound like a deviation. Like, sounds like a deviation. Like yeah, you can use whatever drive you want. That's fine. As long as it's a specification. Cool. Yeah, I don't care uh, that if it you know, fucks up, don't mess with me. It's fine. I yeah, also but, figure most so, major drive manufacturers are going to put like PS5 ready, like stamps on their boxes. There's already some out there that have started saying it. Uh, mm -hmm. So like I think what's Western Digital was talking about their black 800 series, uh, which is PCI for. Um, and I, I think Mark Cerny of PlayStation said, yeah, I grabbed a couple of those myself. And and then he liked to comment on some fire Cuda stuff. So everybody's like, oh, my God, the fire Cudas are working like, no, he just liked the comment. People relax, like tamp it down a little bit. Uh, fortunately, um, fortunately, there's a couple of there's a couple of places out there, like I think Digital Foundry, that just have a list of drives that are compatible, which is nice. You just yeah. go out there and check it. Super nice. Uh, it's it's still not as easy as like what Xbox has had from launch, where you just plug it into the back and it just works. Mm. Uh, and interestingly enough, is still somewhat price comparable. Uh, a lot of these one terabyte drives have recently gone on sale for about two hundred dollars, whereas the uh, Seagate Xbox uh, Drive expansion, which is one terabyte. Uh, is currently going for 220. They need to really drop the price a little bit on that. My understanding too is that's a relatively open format, so just about any manufacturer can build those. Uh, so they just plug right back in the uh, in the back of your Xbox. So it's a it's an interesting mess. I can't wait until someone just messes up their PlayStation Five trying to put one of those in. It's not 
the most difficult thing in the world. Uh, it's but I well, mean, you should go and check a YouTube video before you try it. Right. Yeah. But that's the thing that you haven't realized yet. There's fine writing in the the uh, warranty. So as soon as you open up the PlayStation 5, you don't have a warranty anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't think they would. I nope. don't think they would win a lawsuit on that. I no, mean, yeah, no. uh, yeah, I no. actually uh, you're I'm assuming based on your tone that you're joking. Oh, uh, but yeah. yeah like joking. just just to clarify, like that is something that Sony has, I believe, specifically stated that your warranty can't be voided for since it's by yeah. design. Well, they, they knew design. They were going to do that. Like it's I think it's a separate um, partition is what they said with it, the actual is, yeah, the build. It's, yeah. it's, it's accessible by just pulling off one of the side panels, essentially, whereas the rest of the system, you would have to actually try to go past that point to get into it right but the fine fine print there's like you know you have to like use fine, a black light or something yeah okay well, the, black light. well wow. the fine fine print in these contracts is that yeah. once you've bought any of our products we actually own your soul with and that note true. i'm just gonna say i'm never going to want to have a contract with zycia where i have to use a black light on oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> On that note, give us a few minutes. We'll come back uh, after the break. Listen to a few ads from our friends. And me, potentially. Are you itching for a good story? Laughter among friends, maybe even a mystery or two? Well, you're in luck. Fire Breathing Kittens is a standalone Dungeons & Dragons podcast. Each episode is a separate three-hour-long story, like a movie for your ears. So you can listen to these adventures in any order you like. So, join us on a real play D&D quest as we solve mysteries, attempt comedic banter, and enjoy friendship. Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Fantasy, action, mystery, friendship. Welcome back. Uh, We're going to go into what we've been playing. And now I'm going to spend another hour telling you about The Ascent. (laughs) No, uh, I did tell you the ascent. <laughs> I did play the ascent. Uh, it is great. Go check it out. I've already talked about it. Fast forward or rewind back to the beginning of the show when you can read it or listen. Uh, so I did play some actually. So I, this is actually weird. Wait. for me I actually did play. What is happening here? <laughs> I actually game music did play. <laughs> some other games this week and like a multiple I, I tried to make sure to play your job well try to play different types of games like i because xbox game pass has so many games and i'm like always like kind of falling into the same style um so i did try to do something different this time and uh, this is a game we actually covered uh, previously during i think the nintendo direct i think it was uh they had a game called uh raji an ancient epic uh in what it is, it's on Xbox Game Pass right now for free. Uh, I don't know what it is on Steam. I'm terrible. I should probably look it up. Uh, but Raji is a story of a Indian girl uh, raised up in the Middle East in India and with her brother. Uh, and they are, uh, from what I can tell, are like orphans, I guess. Uh, but they are part of a carnival. Just and real quick. I'm pretty sure India is actually part of Asia. Oh, you're right. I am so sorry. Not the Middle East. It is Asia. I am incorrect. That is terrible. Any chance I get to correct you. No, thank you for correcting me. I can't do it at work anymore. So that is actually so accurate. (laughs) It's funny because I actually told my wife that the other day and then I still ruined it. Uh, Uh, But no, you want to talk about the Suez Canal again? Yes, please. Don't you get tired, day drinker? (laughs) What? Don't you get tired? You said any chance you get to correct Mike. <laughs> I know it's I never. I never it really I, is like <laughs> two so, full time jobs. <laughs> so Raji is uh, the girl's character that you actually do play. And are her, you sure? No. Yes. Her little brother. Uh, I can't remember his name. It's something with a B, but I I murdered it last time I thought about it. Uh, but they work for a, car- a carnival in this town that they grew up in. And the brother talks about he, he actually runs a puppet show and he talks about like this this history of like some story in the lore of like uh, the world or whatever. Talking about this demon guy who comes back and brings all these demons to life. Well, while he's telling the story, these demons show up for real and end up taking the little brother and Raji's not able to like save him. Uh, so, again, she goes after him to try to save him uh, like many most games. 
Uh, this game is very much like uh, if you ever played the original Prince of Persia uh, back in the day, like the actual platformer where you're running and jumping and really, really trying to time your jumps and like make sure you can climb and things like that. I'm not talking about like Windows 95 or maybe yeah. Windows, something <laughs> like crazy. The old, old really old yeah. Prince of Persia game. But uh, what was really neat is it does captivate that. It is a 3D style game, but it is a platformer. So you have like that that depth of feel where you get to see different parts of the map. Uh, until you get to certain areas where you actually can run around uh, pretty free form, like you can run in and out of the scene and left and right. Uh, you do get some weapons uh, that you can uh, weapon or you get one weapon and you get some attacks that you can do. It's there's like multiple combos you can do with this game. Like uh, you find multiple enemies and you can do these different combos where you can climb up walls and like attack or you can climb up this like any kind of like cylinder shape, like and jump off and do some weird attacks. You can also do some magic. Uh, and do different things like that as you learn and progress through the game. Uh, but ultimately, if you're into the platformer sense and like puzzles and such, uh, it's a pretty cool game to to check out. It's um, I haven't gotten too far in it, uh, but it did take my time for a little bit. And it, it is an interesting story, very cool art. Uh, like the cutscenes are all based on like puppets uh, because of the, the story. Um, so you see like even like some of the cutscenes that look realistic, well, not realistic, kind of like artsy, realistic. A cartoon realistic uh but they have like puppet like strings coming from them like they're actually still controlled like that way so uh it's pretty neat uh, i would say check it out if you haven't uh but yeah it was pretty cool definitely kept my attention it's a platformer and uh it's fun we also played i say we <laughs> me kelly and brian and that's grammatically incorrect i should have said brian kelly and i uh, we played yeah. a game called Armello. So Armello is a tabletop game that is on PC. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is definitely a tabletop game. Uh, no doubt about it. It has uh, different elements to it. There's uh, dice included for your fighting. There are cards that you can use to uh, give yourself abilities and play things on different people or play on yourself. Uh, and there's a tabletop, almost like Catan, where it's oct um, an octagon where you're kind of like uh, different... Uh, you know, tiles that you move around with and there's an objective. Uh, there's a king uh, who rules the land. He's a lion, of course, uh, inside his castle. And he's got a thing called rot and rot uh, is basically eating it away from him, uh, eating him away every, you know, every turn, every day cycle. And the idea of the game uh, is to uh, there's a couple different ways to win. But the main one is to uh, either, uh, well, kill the king uh, and become the king or kill everyone else and you become the king or clear the rot from the king and you win that way. Uh, so there's different ways to win. There's different characters you can play. Uh, and I this time chose, uh, I think it was, uh, what was the name? You guys were making fun of it the whole time. You we were like, oh, Barnaby. Wow. It's Barnaby. Yeah, Bar Barnabas or Barnaby. Barnaby, yeah. the, the Barnaby. rabbit. You but, guys, I didn't do any of this. Well, not you. I mean, I, I had I had I was. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm yeah, surprised I was, it even went on your radar because considering it was your wife and Daedricker who make fun of you all the time anyway. So I figured that just like blend into the static. Well, I have to say Barnaby because it's a funny name. Barnaby. Barnaby. Anyway, so each character Barnaby. has fun of it. Let's the truth comes out. Each character has a uh, different ability. So there are um, there's a character who is like very much. Uh, the wolf who like if the, he's better at killing people. So you can try to win that way by killing everybody as many times because you get prestige points every time you kill somebody. Um, Barnaby was kind of like in the middle with more of like a, a trickster kind of sense of winning potentially. I don't know. Uh, and then there's um, there's another character who's more magic that was able to win uh, doing different things like that way. So um, there's just I? many different I was, ways I was like a to rat win. or something. Yeah, you were like the, yeah. the thiever, the thieverish yeah. rat. Uh, it was which like a, like you can do things rack. with, cool. yeah. um, but it goes by day cycle. So there's a day and a night cycle. So you play through and then by the end of the day, uh, you basically things happen on the next day, new events. And then the person with the most prestige each turn gets the, the leader card to be able to determine which <laughs> they want to pick, like either A or B. Um, so it's a really neat game. It's very complex. I, I mean, we could talk about this for probably another 30 minutes and I still wouldn't you cover could. everything. Don't, don't play it if you've been drinking like. <laughs> Somebody I know. If you're a day did. drinker, don't play the game. <laughs> don't. I turned into a night drinker. And How many players like can play this yeah. game together? Uh, you can play up to four. Uh, so four players. I don't recommend playing with AI. 
especially so the learning curve in this game is super high. So when you well, try to play this I, game, I don't with, think it's I, I really don't think it's that high of a, well, of a learning curve. It's I, I high really don't think it's, with the AI. If, they are not you going play, to let up on you. No, that's that's strategy. That's different. Uh, no, it's called if, cheating. If you AI played, cheats. If you played hmm. just about any of like the the. Quickly known like European board games, you'll pick up on this super fast, but it also has the negatives of the same, which is there's only so much you can do on your turn. And yeah. there's so much you can do on your turn that with four people, it just mm -hmm. drags. Yeah, there's not a lot you can do on your turn and three other people got to take your turn. And like, I'm not I'm not saying this is not a fun game. I had fun. Absolutely. The the graphics are great. It's you know, it moves around really neat. Yeah. Uh, it's it's got it's got some cute mechanics that are really cool. Uh, the characterizations of these animal creatures, which is like I love how Zeisius says the king's a lion, of course, and he hasn't said that there's these are anthropomorphized, like Anthropomor anthropomorphized. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, what are those? You know, I have no idea what those are. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> what does this mean? Yeah. Uh, so like, <laughs> I'll like explain you later, know, guys. he played a bunny. I played a bunny. Uh, I think Daydrinker played a shrew. You know, Ravi played a yeah. bear. A I just played strategy a strategy game and I didn't even know you guys were playing it. Hey, you know There's what? There's a reason Here, for that. Here's what I wanted. Yeah. First of all, you would dominate. So we already know. First of all, there wasn't more space. There's only four people. That's yeah, why you it, asked that question earlier. How many people? And, already and how about. Four. Yeah, I know. And how about next time? Um, Bruno, you and I are on the same team. There's no teams. There's no yes. teams. So There's a t uh, that's it. That's okay. a good point. No. To mention. It's Team Demirin and Daydrinker. Double D. Team Double D. If it's a strategy team, team, so we can D. definitely find a way. So to ally. there is a point to make with, this, with oh, that. D, yeah. So the game has been uh, coined, and this is from other people, not me, uh, but it is the Game of Thrones, like, but with like animals. Uh, and it is very much that because oh, there, there are there, different things even, and alliances. There's even a card in there called right. Game of Thor uh, Game of Thorns. Thorns. Yeah. Yes. yes. So that, uh, there are I things played. you can play on other people that will tie your characters almost like a, a heart. What do you call those? Um, like a binded oh, no. heart kind but, of game, but like or card. But but like there's a lot of it's games. It's a board like game. But yeah, it's it's, it's very, very much fun. You can definitely get people to to be on your team. And, oh and yeah. I don't mean uh, that derisive, guess who's guess who's guess whose team I'm on. Team Demirans, Double D, Triple D. <laughs> it, it's it's a board game, but it does stuff in the video game format that you can't do on a board game. Yeah. So I'm telling you, if I, I don't mean that derisive, if mm. you like that type of board game, you're going to love this thing. Mm. If you don't like waiting for other people's turns, boy, it's it, you're you're going to have some fun, but you're going to I'm going to probably be annoyed a little bit. I'm going to so, tell you the secret behind every single 4X slash strategy game that uh -oh. has long don't, late hey, game, mid game. Do player not, base do turn. not give away triple D secrets. Do not give pull away up, triple D secrets. No, pull up a web browser, pull up a web browser, put on a show that you can watch while half paying attention to it or uh, legitimately play a smaller game. Pull up something like Loop Hero. <laughs> Something that's really easy to play and, and you're good. That's that's all yeah. you can do for Forex games. Or clean, I guess, if you're like, I don't know, a responsible adult. But I do that for Civ, but that? yeah, I don't want to do that. No, no, one no. of the things I will mention with this game is, like they said, it, it does take a long time. Um, definitely, like, this isn't a game you're going to play multiple sessions in one night. Uh, the other thing, too, though, to mention with you guys is we did turn the, the turn counter off. Uh, because uh, I was trying to yeah. explain the game to you guys and you guys were needing time to, to well, figure timer, out timer, the term timer, turn timer. So that way you had time to like mm -hmm. figure out even what you were doing. So there it's, is a turn timer that typically would be on that would speed the game up, at least keep the game on pace. Five um, seconds. That we Go. did have yeah. we did have disabled. So there is that. Yeah. But there's there's all kinds of customizable settings you can do with the game. Uh, so you can change all kinds of different uh, parts of it. But uh, really yeah. cool game. Definitely check it out if you're into the. It's 19.99 on Steam and it was free on Xbox Games with Gold <clears throat> in May. I think it was yeah. if you were lucky enough to pick it up at that time. And boy, does it have some 
microtransaction stuff. Not a yeah. ton ton, but there there is some. Nothing that's going to make you better than anybody else. It's just mostly cosmetic. Like you can get different like color dice. Characters. Like, uh, different mm-hmm. characters, different die. Like you can get like ones with like flames on them. The, the different animations characters with that those. Die. Uh, so different things like that. But yeah, there's and there's also extra character DLC that you can also buy uh, from the store, the Steam store. So yeah, check it out. Uh, I also played something else. I know I'm, t- I'm on a roll this week. Like it's yeah, crazy. You are very busy. He was like, oh, <sighs> no, I'm so busy. Oh, yeah. I see what you're busy. So with. this yeah. last game I won't talk too much about because it, it's. Oh, so only 10 minutes. You only have to be into these kind of games to get it. But I played a game called Tropico 6, also free on Xbox Game Pass. Tropico 6, uh, I've never played any of the other series before. So if there is a five, a one through five, I wouldn't even know because I've never played them. Uh, This may be just the first game. (laughs) Um, But it's basically uh, cities, uh, city skyline or, you know, uh, Sim City, except on an island or archipelago. Like you can actually like archipelago. Archipelago. Yes. <laughs> Archipelago. Did I say it wrong again, too? Damn. Okay. Yes. No, no. I said the other word wrong. I thought no, it was wrong. One was me. Was right. One was you. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. Day drinker. I'm sorry. You're going to get points for this. Has drank copious amounts of wine can still talk better than we can. And, oh, Apparently. just wait. Just wait. Hold on. I'm going to drink this. I didn't know. Um, uh, what is a. <laughs> I'm about to start drinking Wait, this thing. Nope. Oh, a sour monkey? Day or a gold monkey. Oh, nice. Gold monkey, yeah. No, no, f- no free good. advertising. Belgian. Oh, I'm not advertising. This it's is not Belgian, advertising. Uh, she she holds it right drinking. up to the camera. Belgian quad. That's good. That's good. Day, day drinker, give us like, I'm not advertising. Word. I'm just saying that this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what's, the next, what's the next $10 word there, day drinker? Yeah. Which one? What? The what next is? $10 word. Like, uh, uh, do we talk about we archipelago? Is that what you were no, saying? Yeah, that was the last ten dollar word. What's the next ten? I don't word? know. I don't know. I didn't. So hear it the big. neat okay. thing with this game, uh, <laughs> and it makes to me makes it different from the city style game or Sim City is usually when you play Sim City or cities, you're kind of like the god, right? Like you kind of control the eh. world and. Well, you don't want to like have a physical mayor. appearance. Well, like you're just you don't have a physical appearance like they're you're just kind of making things happen. And, you know, the world just kind of continues. Uh, the difference in this game is you actually are the El Presidente is what they say. Yes. Um, which you actually physically have a building that you stay in and you have a person that uh, is an actual character that walks around and does things that you uh, can tell it to do and such. Uh, so one of the cool things with that is the way that you stay the president day is by voting. So you have to do well, things. Um, well, you, you do hold votes. You can so. steal an election. Uh, <laughs> you can. So there are uh, different votes you that can, do happen uh, so many years apart that your people, depending on the, the, the rate that they like you or not, uh, they will vote for you. Uh, and you can do things to sway them. So you can. Like there's so many different layers this game. There's like propaganda you can create. There is uh, like you can bribe people. You can actually put hits on people. So if there was like a faction that's like spreading the lies of, you know, the Far East or something that you don't want, you can just put a hit on that person and then just disappear or you can make them have an accident and uh, all these different (laughs) things that you can kind of do. But one of the neat things is like when you start off, like you're really just trying to build up your your uh, embargo, like really just trying to get like some exports going. Um, and we're trying to build corn. You're trying to do sugar and building sugar makes rum and I can make a rum factory to export rum. I um, like this game now. And uh, it's it's really neat um, to get that going. <laughs> and then you have factory. the other powers of the world uh, coming in, trying to to try to just, you know, deter you or sway you to to give them better deals. So if you're into these type of games like these micromanagement, project management type games, um, feel free to check this one out. Tropico six it is available. Right now. Also, okay. nineteen ninety nine. No, excuse me. It's actually, uh, I think, thirty dollars on Steam. It's a thirty dollar game on Steam, or forty thirty nine ninety nine. Whoa! I'm stall up. Well, anyway, that's mine. So you guys can talk about it. Next. Uh, I'll, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna sit back and drink now. Take over again. Uh, so. uh, The last game of the moment was Operation Tango and Phoenix and I played and we played again. This game just keeps getting better and better. Um, The camaraderie and just the cooperation it takes. 
it's been a lot of fun. We had so many moments where we're like, high five, and we like high five each other. <laughs> yeah. It was so it's the graphics are incredible. The dichotomy is I amazing. Didn't, I didn't realize we were making a TikTok video today. <laughs> well that just so you know, TikTok is very short. Uh and we so are not. I'm gonna go on and on and on, just like you actually did. we are and literally in the name. <laughs> So uh, this, uh, that's really uh, I mean, this short attention span syndrome, which I mean, means you're going to just fact tune checkers out. say that Zeishi is right. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> I hate it when Wait he's right. Me. Just let me take longer to explain this again. Uh, so for anybody who didn't watch that or listen to our last podcast, uh, uh, Operation Tango is an asymmetric game. Uh, one person is the agent and the other person is the hacker. And what you see versus what your partner sees is completely different. (laughs) He's going to leave you hanging, honey. He's like, I'm busy. I'm going to leave you hanging. I think what was even better about that is that we had right before Mm -hmm. the, when we did the game of the moment with Mm -hmm. this, had just finished a mission that we were so frustrated because we could figure out this darn puzzle. Mm-hmm. And we said, OK. Literally last night, we're like, OK, let's switch sides. Let's switch sides because we've we've seen the other side of the puzzle. So we'll be able to figure out if we switch the beginning, sides. It, it wasn't we hadn't even gotten very far into it. Yeah, it wasn't that yeah. far that we hit this <clears throat> puzzle and we start going through. And first of all, both of us like, wow, I didn't even know the other side looked like this. This is wow. Like so both of cool. us were like, we couldn't believe it was a completely different viewpoint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, th- <laughs> yes, thank you, Keanu. <laughs> <laughs> well timed. Uh, and once we got past it, we got to the puzzle and we, we just figured it out. Yeah. Like having seen the other side, we're like, I get oh. it now. We failed the first time. We still failed the first time. We're like, Oh, no, wait, we got it. Yeah. And then so we instantly you guys figured it. out it worked better when you don't shoot your partner. Is that what happened? Oh, no, that's one that way. Was yeah, that's, that's definitely one way. <laughs> and we won't talk about that anymore. Uh, and then we kept and We had found out we were like such a small percentage into this mm-hmm. mission that everything kept building up and mm-hmm. up and up in this mission. Like, we're like, oh, my God. Like, wow, yeah. did you just see that? And we're like, high five. And we're like, yeah. Whoop. we just, we kept high-fiving over and, and over it was uh oh, it was and it, we kept doing different puzzles uh-huh. and we and it kept introducing new things okay. and then it introduced another thing like we're used to these puzzles like coming one at a time and then all of a sudden we have three of these puzzles up on the screen at one time we're like yeah. oh no oh, wait God. no you gotta i was like danger you gotta what are go you left. Seeing? now do this puzzle now do that <laughs> yeah. now what do you see here what do you see here and we're like oh we failed and like we yeah. go back and try again and we kept getting closer and closer and we finally got to the ending. And even at the ending, I was like, oh, my God, I just realized that, like, you are on the top of a virtual building and you're about to base jump down. And I have to <laughs> open the doors right when you get to the bottom. And, and it's just all, like it's <laughs> and it's all like really in symbolism. It, it's yeah. not looking like that, like you would expect, mm-hmm. like in Call of Duty, like jumping off a building or anything like that. Uh, it's all symbolism. And, we don't play and that game. It, we don't play that game. <laughs> we don't play that game. And it. I was just really shocked coming back to it after pretty much a week and sitting down and going, holy shit, yeah. we're having even more fun than the last yeah. time we sat down. It's it really does I, I still just have keep concerns. getting better and better. Yeah, I still have concerns about the replayability. Yeah. But that Who mission, I could see us replaying again. When you never yes. finish the game. Yes. Well, you just keep going. That mission, I could see us replaying once or twice and still having yes. more fun, fun. Uh, as we go through it. But uh, again, if you like keep talking and no one explodes. It's like that times 10 because it's mm. got so many other puzzles and things that are completely different than that. And there's still some shades of that, even in the mission that we did last night. 
But there's so many other things that I was like, no, you're going the wrong way. And she goes, no, you don't understand the perspective yeah. I'm seeing. I'm like, yeah. no, like, no, seriously, don't go 180 degrees. Go back the other way. Like, yeah. no, left. And she's like, what? And then like going the opposite. And I'm like, no, that's the opposite. It was yeah. so confusing and yeah. so fun at the same time. There were things that I could see that he couldn't see. And I'm like, just trust me on this. Like, there's this this the in it, it, this thing that's and not still, erasing these other things. And, oh, it was fun. And we still have to play that whole mission mm -hmm. again, flipped again, because yes, I had yes, not gotten yes. to that level as yeah. the hacker. So I have no clue at yeah. all what she's talking about. Uh, Danger was saying the last thing, but there was actually one mm -hmm. more thing that we've been playing because I've been playing a whole bevy of games. I have been playing games that are like just basic little RPG games like Cthulhu Saves Christmas to uh, active dual stick shooters, bullet hell, top down games that have take an immense amount of. Just timing and ability to react to what's on the screen, and I have been playing this all on Stadia. So I literally have a controller. I'm sorry, that what? connects to my Wi-Fi. Brian, are you feeling OK? And I plug in. Brian, did you hear it? Did you hear what he said? I plug in. Yeah, he, something about he wouldn't watch the game at the stadium. A Chromecast Ultra. And with those two things, I don't have to install anything. I literally go to the game and I said play and I'm in there and I can play the game. And I was genuinely like so you got direct I TV? did this. I just hooked it up to my TV for the that time. I'm trying to get it hook up my capture card and I haven't gotten that to work yet. So I'm actually kind of curious. About I did hear that. direct TV. No, not direct TV. My TV. You said instant TV. That's what I heard. No, my TV. This is not Folgers. It's not instant coffee in your cup. TiVo. Got it. Oh, God. What did I miss? Did like Zeissia trying to be funny? Uh, uh, and not like again. failing what? miserably. But yeah, I mean, to be totally honest, the only joke that I've heard in this entire segment was that somebody played the stadia. <laughs> I am not advocating stadia because the trouble with it is you still have to go and buy your games all over again. Uh, and on top of that, any multiplayer game, you have to have someone else's on stadia because it's not cross play. It's which is terrible. So this but is never going to happen because Brian's the only person playing Stadia. <laughs> exactly. I'm not. I'm never going to be able to play multiplayer. Like at but all, period. He globally. is Stadia. Playing, There's one user. Brian Stadia. Phoenix. Playing a single player game that takes timing with what's going on the screen. I was pleasantly surprised. I was playing in the furthest away from my Wi-Fi. It had actually told me you have a bad signal. And it was extremely responsive and extremely snappy with right. my controls. Well, the resources aren't used being utilized. You're the only person playing. Except that it's not a resource problem. It's a problem that my controller has to go through the Wi-Fi to the server and then react to the server and then send that. So the reaction that I've done happens on the server, not in front of me. And then the video of that gets streamed down to my TV. So you would expect a lot more lag. Uh, goodness, just our podcast has <clears throat> half a second a, uh, or or so a lag between, you know, our video and just sending it to Zycia to like transmit out that if uh, if we don't do editing, the video part of the podcast looks horrible. Are you, are you trying to compare the latency in our podcast audio to a system provided by Google? I think that's absolutely what because we're all on fiber. So you would think <laughs> that we being on the same provider in fiber would have an extremely fast connection to each other. No, but man, but they get don't. that fat AT&T backup. <laughs> hey, there's no free advertising. Yeah, <laughs> let's not talk about them. Because you heard it here first, guys. Um, buy your Stadia now. They love the no, trash. no, do not buy Stadia. <laughs> do not get this. It is a novelty 
at best. It works. Absolutely. <laughs> it and just if works. anything. My toaster if, also works. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Don't buy it. I mean, Don't listen to what toaster, I'm saying guys. here. I am not buy, advocating buy a this toaster. <laughs> buy a toaster. Buy Mike's toaster. <laughs> <laughs> buy Mike's toaster. There's a there's an Amazon. What I'm saying, Reddit for this. Shit what I'm toaster. saying is <laughs> that this technology being proven out by Stadia gives me <clears throat> hope for things like the Xbox Cloud or even PlayStation Now, for that matter that something like that is actually possible, but it has to be in an ecosystem where you can play with your friends. And if yeah. I can't play with you all, and I guess as I see it too, then it's just not going to be a workable system for me. Yeah. That may not be the link I put in chat. It's something similar. Maybe Amazon Mia Toaster, <coughs> Amazon Mia Toaster. Oh my god! I was a mod for toaster? it. I was a mod for oh. it for like a day or a week. <laughs> it was during that last Reddit thing where they like randomly made subreddits based on people, and I got put into that one for some reason. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, Stadia sounds really cool. I'm I'm. I, I never when you told me about it, you were like, like kind of depressed that you were excited about it, I guess you could say. <laughs> like, you were like, so I played the studio. Uh, yeah, I'm like, oh, that's I terrible. Was, you're like, no. I I'm was legitimately <laughs> shocked that it played as good as it did because yeah. it's a dead platform. A, no on one, arrival. Like, dead on arrival. No almost. one should buy this. Yeah, on arrival it was dead. No one should buy this. But it actually works pretty well fantastic like i i i it wasn't just me i put my wife on it and she goes she she was like this is like it's a console right here she knew what the technology was and what it meant and everything and you have she was a smart like, wife this is like a, that's true but that's what i'm saying is yeah. is she was able she was smart mm -hmm. enough to know that it shouldn't have been that good and she's like no this is like it's just like a console right here it's like I'm just yeah. I'm just playing a game. Oh, I it's was not, not I was a cloud not service. I, I did not mean for that to sound like, oh, she's a wife and she's not uh, like. No, um, you didn't. You I, that didn't. was like you that fine. was like a, you, no, that you was an fine. added in thing. Well, I wasn't Sorry. thinking that until you elaborated. Oh, I'm so, oh, my I, like, goodness. I, I overthought that. I am sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Holy. You're, you're, you're great. Come on, be, get it together, Daydream. I mean, I, double I, D. That's fine. Double D. You keep wife, being you. So I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, nope, don't say you're sorry. Shovel you keep being in you, double dirt. D. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna do me. That's right. You do you. I'm gonna do me. Uh, but I think that's I'm gonna do enough me. of what we've been playing. <laughs> <laughs> that's. Wow. Thank you for taking it there. <laughs> it's a microphone. It's a microphone for everybody who sees it. It's the Moana microphone. Yep. And Moana's band. personal massager. <laughs> Sorry. That just, we should probably move guys. into the short news. Yeah, let's so do that. So if you haven't cause... seen it, you should, since you brought it up, Moana and everything, mm -hmm. you should really go out and see the uh, YouTube video of little girls being fascinated by the Costco employee that looks like the main character Moana. Really? Okay, I'll check it out. I'll show the girls. <clears throat> I guess you could put the link over there somewhere. No. Was a, that was a mouthful oh, yeah. of a title. So, Did Mike write that? Short attention <laughs> news. <laughs> right. I can't really dance to this one. Yeah, that it, one's well, yeah, it's sped up. Though. No, it's, it's sped up double. It, no. So yeah, it's meant to be fast. That's not, not, not what she said. Right. Tell me about it. Yeah. Tell us well, about it. I guess it. I'll wait until he finishes. I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let you. No, do you ever 
Because really what we're talking about right now is what Zeissi wants to talk about anyway, because he has been the most fascinated, the most excited about the upcoming Steam Deck so much so that he already has his reservation in. And this might be exciting for him, but no, it won't be because he ordered the wrong one. He ordered the base model that has the slow, slow SSD in it. They instead, <laughs> what we found out yeah, is that the it. 512 model at $649 showed up on the website that it might come earlier than the other ones. It shifted from quarter one, 2022 to quarter three, 2022. Wait, that's the wrong way. Do you guys not know what's going on here? But it should be coming <laughs> earlier than the others. Personally, I think this is just a goof up on the website and they're all pretty much going to come at the same time. Short part of this is Zycia update your order and at least get the 256 gig model and the faster hard drive. I think I'm OK with it. It's fine. Everything's fun. good. Okay. It's going to be great. So Ariana Grande is on August 6th. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, so if you're listening to the podcast, it might be too late, uh, is going to headline the Fortnite Rift Tour. Um, there are going to be a couple of in-game rewards, one of which is the Ar Ariana Grande skin. Um, this was... Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, no, that's what it says. I swear I, it's not that type of thing. Get the skin, guys. Get the skin and then go and dominate your enemies. Leave them swinging <laughs> side to side. What did I do wrong there? You did. <laughs> that was bro brutal that time. <laughs> oh, man. And scene. On that note. That was a great <laughs> short. No, so um, I, 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 I had I other am, stuff to talk about, but we're good. <laughs> no, and you probably interject up here in a second. I no, honestly I'm am going to try to catch that if I can, mostly because I have not been able to catch one of the in mm. in <laughs> Fortnite in platform, not in game, in platform okay. events that they've been going on. They've been, they've been doing, and I heard that the last concert that they did was fantastic because like they had a lot of people that were standing around and watching the concert. And then all of a sudden they were like flying through space, all of them. And that like the people, you know, the artists put on the concert, like were like super huge and looking yeah. down on them. And so I think it's a really interesting thing that they can play around with a lot of the visuals and a lot of the ideas being that it's a virtual space and that it's not real life. So I, I, I I'm not a fan of Ariana Grande. I mean, I know who she is. I, yeah. I'm sure I've heard one of her songs or two or three. Oh, yeah. I can't tell you a single one of them off the top of my head. And yet I'm interested in this. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to try for the podcast for science because everybody demands it and wants to know I'm going to try to attend this thing. If Sweet. I was not going to be driving, I would be attending it as well. Just I uh, of, just yeah, wouldn't curiosity. be attending it, but that's great. I'm glad you guys will. So you can save me the time. Got Thanks a with Ariana Grande? for the science. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's for science. Destroy you. No, I don't have a problem with her. <clears throat> I mean, she broke up with that SNL guy. For Pete so, Davidson's like, sake, I'm just going to watch it, but I can't. Pete Davidson. Seriously came out so much ahead from that mm. whole concept. I agree. The man should be like thanking her for a lot of this stuff. Yes. No, he the, should. The no, dude uh, must have been swimming in it for a while. Uh, listen, I, I think I thought Pete right. Davidson in was the words the of Ariana Grande. Thank you. Next. Did good. she say that? She did. Yeah. Wait, what? It's one of her songs. OK. No clue. <laughs> ah, M scene. <laughs> Go. <laughs> So Amazon coming up very soon. Well, I guess soon is a relative matter. Uh, as far as Lord of the Rings goes, <clears throat> it's pretty soon. Let me tell you, they're going to be setting up a Lord of the Rings original series. Uh, they talked about it recently. It's going to premiere September 2nd, 2022. In all reality, that's not that far away. And it's just going to be a weekly episodic approach to the Lord of the Rings. So other than that, we really don't know anything at this point. So mm. if you care, hopefully you have a prime membership because, you know, 
goodness knows that 2024, you're going to need a prime membership just to vote in the presidential election. <laughs> Probably. Jeff Bezos, is he going to be the president? Is that what you said? No, he's no longer with No, you he's, time. yeah, he wouldn't do that. He would be the dictator behind the <laughs> scenes with the puppet president <laughs> voted in by Amazon. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so do you guys remember Laugh. the uh, people ha- having like, anxiety and stress over the iphone 11 and all the dots the on the back of the phone the or the camera. top of the xbox x or the top of the xbox x um, lots of dots it's called trypophobia uh hmm. final fantasy 14 has released uh a new uh, character a new a new job uh sage uh and walker the Endwalker expansion, um, the healer class that fights with the floating blades and no new lists. You can tell I've played a lot of Final Fantasy. Um, oh, you should. So Wish I knew I know, I correct you this time. I know. Sorry. So <laughs> she's still doing better. Than they released the, the character <laughs> in the icons. The icon for this specific character has. Um, uh, different dots and dots. openings. And it's freaking some people out. Trypophobia. Uh, They're saying that it makes them uncomfortable and fearful. Um, It's trypophobia is the irrational aversion to clusters of small, irregular holes. And they say it's related to our instincts to be afraid of like insects and dying flesh, stuff like stuff and like diseased stuff. Yeah, I kind of get where it's coming from. I don't mm. have it. I'm looking at I'm looking at this like it's it's there. It's mm. it's Sage's symbol, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and it's got it, these her icon, yeah. Kind of. Yeah, her icon. It's got these kind of almost teardrop type. Well, not teardrop. Mm. It's yeah. It, it like well, staffs and they got dots on the top. Yeah. And. It's not that many dots. It's it's like three. So or four. I was actually yeah. kind of shocked that it would became yeah. a trigger. But hey, you know, yeah. trigger is a trigger. A trigger is a trigger. trigger. And to their to, so. to to them, kudos to them. Like they fixed it. They are they yeah, they, they like basically it. filled yeah, in the awesome. holes. Yeah. So they were like, oh, we don't want to upset anybody. Like happy game. Well, and it's so, it's gotten yeah. a. I mean, I mean, happy. I had not heard of it until. Well, it was probably five or six years ago that I heard about it for the first time. And at that point, it was like. SpongeBob SquarePants was freaking the people the F out. And. And Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, a sponge is 100 percent of it. I totally forgot about the SpongeBob thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like saying certain words that have to do with wetness. Oh, stop. Don't See? even See? go there. That's what I'm saying. I know. I know where you're going. Did, Don't did say I? the M word. Did I miss you, something? Yeah. You said you know, what's that word? Point. What's that uh, word when yeah, something is like a sponge? I took- Don't say it. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that's my point is like there's just these little triggers. You're, you're going to say it. I got to put my headphones back on. You can say it. No. OK. They haven't said anything, but uh, okay, there's these triggers that people have and they're yes. real triggers. They are real. And they, they are real. Really, they really bug people. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm glad that they changed this. Um, I'm, I'm actually kind of shocked that, <laughs> that they didn't change the Xbox. I am super <laughs> rejoiced with a cover for it. Rejoiced. Super <laughs> rejoiced. If I could flick you off right now, I really would. I would really you would. rather joist me oh. right now? Is enough. That- enough. OK. I'm gonna let's take people's triggers seriously. And you can do Mike. the rest of my stuff. No. Mike is gonna get stabbed. Holy cow. <laughs> she would. I know where you live, Mike. I know where you live. That's cool. She also <laughs> watches your dog for you, so like you should be nicer to her. I mean, you're right. I wouldn't worry about the dog. She wouldn't do anything to that, but once no. you show up to pick it up, no, she'd shiv you. I mean, there's, <laughs> yeah, I there's by the time she's done with you, those people who have a fear of small uh-huh. cluster of holes will be afraid of your corpse for sure. <laughs> exactly. I'm there's sure certain she's... times there's certain times to hoist up your petard, <clears throat> and this yeah. is not yeah. it. I'm sure I she's guarantee. very I'm sure she's very disappointed. Oh, la, 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 la. I don't hear you. La, 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 la. And moving on. This is going to work well in the audio <laughs> podcast. 
<laughs> I cannot so wait to see. So if you're an independent game developer, you're most likely gonna using my roof, one so or gonna, two have to look at the of the joists. free engines that are provided to you. So Stop there's, it! <laughs> there's Unreal Engine, and then there's Unity. If you're familiar with Unity, it is free uh, for game devs. You can find a different resources for it. It's pretty easy to learn. There's also videos online that you can watch. Uh, one of the things that Unity came out with recently has announced that on June 30th, uh, they were going to make any person that's going to be using Unity for the purpose of putting their game uh, on a platform, uh, they were actually going to have to switch over to the paid version of Unity. So the Unity Pro license, or preferred platform license key, uh, to be able to develop on platforms outside of just PC. Uh, this is pretty pretty crazy uh, for this type of move for them because the fact that there are so many independent makers that are making mm -hmm. games for different things uh, that now are going to have to start paying a cost of like potentially up to uh, $1,800 a year uh, per seat of uh, users that we're using. So uh, this is a huge blow for Unity, but also a smart move for Unity. They're not been, they haven't been doing very well um, on their financials lately. Uh, so this is probably one of the main reasons they're doing this is trying to boost up some of their sales. I mean, Unreal's been eating their lunch because Fortnite has been... I'm raising my hand. Like sure, say something. Uh, I vote... Uh, that we extend the short news to two minutes instead of just 60 seconds. No. Oh, get, stop it. <laughs> get out of my head. Next. I was literally thinking that on the way home. Today. On, on to other things that uh, <laughs> turn out to take way longer That's than expected. Creepy. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about age of empires four. Um, specifically the beta, which started today. So if you're hearing this story, now, which you are, or any time <clears throat> after this, sorry, <laughs> you're not going to play it, but here's the news about it. It started today. Your last day to sign up was the third by 459 Pacific time. Um, <laughs> Age of Empires 4 releases in October, I think. So if you didn't get to it yet, I don't know, get wrecked or something. <laughs> like, this sorry. is an actual short story. I have 18 seconds left to say whatever I want. This is AOE and I don't even care about it, so... <laughs> I love Age of Empires till October. Oh, no, we'll for see. sure. Let's let's get there. I can't wait. That's gonna be fun. I'm down. Let's talk about BOTW. So BOTW, Breath of the Wild, if you're familiar worst with the Zelda. Game. <laughs> was anyway, not worst game for. series. I speaking totally of being it. triggered. So the uh there is a fan, a Zelda fan, uh, who goes by the name of YouTuber. It's a uh, Nassim Software. Uh, he actually created a almost Google map, uh, so street view of the Hyrule Kingdom from Breath of the Wild. So he created a website. Uh, the website's actually uh, nasimsoftware.github.io slash Zelda bot. Uh, sorry, Zelda BOTW street view. Uh, and what it is is actually a map of the whole Hyrule uh, area where you have different uh, points that you can click on. And then from those points, you can actually like in street view, click the arrow to move to the next area and you can see like a round panoramic of all the different areas around that. So if you're playing the game and you have questions and you have an idea of where you want to go, this is a good way to check that out. So really neat for him to do that and uh, you can check it out on YouTube. All right, into our next story, which uh, brings something from uh, from a year plus ago uh, back into the spotlight, PS5 dev kits. Uh, appeared on eBay this last week and were quickly pulled down. Specifically, two dev kits. Uh, they have item codes. I'm not going to list them because they're just numbers and letters and it just... Pfft, who cares about technical information? <laughs> All you need to know is the <laughs> raw numbers because they got up to 2,850 euros and, which is around 3,373 USD after only 12 bids before being pulled down. Like, that's kind of ridiculous and i'm sure they probably go for like 15 to twenty thousand easily damn um, scalpers damn scalpers even <laughs> the, the pre-release development versions you bastards <laughs> <laughs> that's it i'm finishing my shorts with like 20 seconds okay right. i'm taking suck. your 20 Passing seconds yeah. so xbox and ways teamed up uh teamed up advertised together uh you can choose <clears throat> master chief or Eshram, Escharam, forgive me, 
I have always enjoyed watching people play uh, Halo. Not a good player. Uh, so you can choose their voice to guide you home. You can also uh, choose the different cars. Um, I have actually done this on I w the second I saw this, it was like, oh, my God. So uh, Master Chief guides me home. A couple of things he says because I took some notes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it looks like you're my right. That oh, was very odd. Ashram. Yes. <laughs> I did not expect that. <laughs> I in this like freaking tickled me. So uh, some Whoa. things he says <laughs> tickled me in the non weird way. Like, OK, so uh, not like the Moana <laughs> thing behind you. Gotcha. Yeah, not like that. Not. No, totally different. Totally different. Um, he says police. I'm going to do my best, Master Chief. Oh. Police. Police reported ahead. Did you call for reinforcements? Did that, did that, was that good? <laughs> oh, man. Um, wow. What does this show become? What is, what are we awesome. Awesome. He also what say, is the word? It's so good. Uh, I was like, take exit 172 and then turn right. Fall out. This is an awful Master Chief voice. Let me let me try harder for the next one. He says, there's an incident reported ahead. Eyes up. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> it's better than somebody's Keanu Reeves. I Whoa. Got him. Yeah. Can I get a high five? Can I get a high five? <laughs> Can I get a hot tub? Get out of here. You guys are crazy. Oh, man. Oh. So Listen, you get the hot tub and all four of us are in it podcasting. Yes. Uh, I, depends on the hot tub. Depends on the hot tub. I can't with you guys anymore. I really can't. You guys are just killing me. The three me. of us will podcast from a hot tub. <laughs> so here's our email section. Triple D and me. Which is empty. Ooh. Send us oh. an email. GOA an at sassgaming.com. And we'll I'm going to start sending us emails just Might so you well. have to read it out loud. <laughs> yeah. So if you're listening to us on the podcast, we do this live on Thursday nights, typically uh, on Twitch. And then once the video is done, we do put that out on YouTube, usually by the weekend. Uh, so if you want to check us out live, feel free to do that. Uh, if you also uh, want to check out our content on our YouTube page, you can check us out at youtube.com slash SAS gaming, S-A-S-S gaming. Uh, we've uh, been putting out, you know, all of these videos on there. We've got the game of the moments on there. We're trying to get more short format content on there. Uh, I swear, we hope I, I've dreamed about it. I just don't do it. Uh, eventually, so, we're going right. to do that. Check so, out if, do if you have any um questions about uh operation tango if you are at all interested in it just check it out uh we did just upload a new video um and you can see both my perspective and phoenix's perspective of the game uh don't ruin it for yourself but look at it get a friend to join you if you need a friend me and phoenix are probably available too <laughs> so hit us up on the discord uh, yeah. If you want to check out our Discord, it's available. If you go to our website, www.sasgaming.com, you can find all our links there. Uh, we also have a Patreon. So if you're interested in trying to support us in a different way other than just subscribing to YouTube, uh, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash sasgaming. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much what got our attention this week. Uh, you know, for all of you fans who are out there listening to us, we thank you a lot because this is literally thank the reason that why we do this is for you guys. And sometimes a chuckle to poke a stab at different things that uh, like I just know, do it to jousting, make fun of Mike. Uh, things like that. So we appreciate you guys. And until next time, you guys be safe. And again, wear a mask, man. This Delta is just not going to go away. So please, please do something. Just stop. Until next time. Love you guys. Take care. <laughs>